by burning. So for example, if you have, let's say, let's say you had, you had a memory disk, yes? And there were many memory disks and the program that was written on the memory, memory disk was flawed. Now you have a newer version. So what would you do? You would erase those ones. How do you ones. know it's flawed? <laughs> because how do you know it's flawed? The one that you're burning is a lie, Based and the one that you're following okay. is true. If you let me finish, consensus. What consensus? Uthman was the one who was deciding. Check, this is about the preservation no, of the Is he God? Is Uthman your actual he's, God? He's, is no, no. Uthman your actual God? I'm not testing anything. Listen, guys, no about the burning of the Uthman Quran. I don't repeat. Let's continue. Bits and pieces. That's me. What they would have a kind of wash. Yeah, I was just about to tell you. Yeah, because of that, so yeah. they have to bear all of these things to make sure that they're the intact. Yeah, so you sure that. Okay, so basically, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Paolo, to finish, finish about the burning of the Quran, is that, like I said, it was not authoritative. So people would write their own copies, and they would put in the commentary. They would put their own commentary. They would write things like notes in the site and all. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened when when time uh, when when time passed was that they were getting mixed up with what the Quran was and what that commentary was so some of them were memorizing the hadiths and some of them so later on when the Prophet ﷺ himself has said that you have to now write the hadith separately and the Quran separately even then maybe people matter so to get rid of all this mixture what Uthman did was now we have an authorized Quran now we there were different and it was based on consensus yeah. he had people he consulted Absolutely. with and this Who's is consensus? important consensus. Well, based, based, on on the people of Medina, based on the people who were with the Prophet based on the yeah. people okay. who were so one of the one so of you are following your Prophet just as much as you are following these people from Medina and just as much as you are following Uthman by the way following the Prophet is in the Quran Atiyo Allah Atiyo Rasul yes so the Quran I don't, I don't the Quran Quran itself instructs and us then, to follow the prophets. And there is another thing. Have, there is another thing. Come up with all the verses. There is, let, it's yeah, possible. Let me, let, it's possible. Let me, let me. But if other people were meddling with the Quran, they were, were choosing and were choosing what's the right Quran, what's no, the wrong no, Quran, no, 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 no. This is where this is where speculation comes in. I was talking about speculation. The book was not written by Muhammad. The book was memorized. Do you not understand? Memorized. Yes. Very flawed. Maybe your memory. Maybe your memory is flawed. I will tell you something. Okay. He doesn't understand. Something which is tested. Me being European. Listen. Something which is tested multiple times, multiple attestations. Oh, is it Eurocentric? Why? Because okay. because because the the, the the over emphasis and reliance upon the written word is a Eurocentric kind of contribution to humanity. Because that's the only way they can do it. History did not begin in Europe. It began in Mesopotamia, which is located in the Middle East. You, bro, are an ignorant person. Okay. Okay. Just let me. No, no, just no, 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 he's calling me Eurocentric. I call him ignorant. It's not an assault. Hey, you are. Yes, it is. You are not Eurocentric. How am I Eurocentric? It's not an assault. I just told you that the first civilization was the Sumerian civilization by the way, in the Middle East. By the way, in the Middle East. You should learn with those guys. You should learn that history. Can I, can I ask you? you? You said that memorizing is fraud based on what? Sorry? You said memorizing is fraud based on what? It, because writing something down is much more trustworthy. Who told you that? I can change something that's written. There I can go. change something that's written. Subjectivity is all you It's not subjectivity. Subject. No, you're the one subjectivity. Because anything that is written down can easily be altered. Do you not know that? Imagine this. If something... Wait, wait, brother. Imagine this. If something, someone wrote a line, a statement, and in that statement they made a mistake. And this mistaken statement gets copied over multiple times. Are we really How can having a discussion? Yes. What is more trustworthy? Memorizing or writing yes, down? Yes, we are. Are we really yes. having yes. a yes. discussion? Because I just proved to you that <laughs> something that is written down can easily be altered. Why did humans write anything if memorizing is better? Because they did both. No, this what? Because they because did the both. They did both. No, but why writing? Who told why you? write Who told when memorizing you? Who told is better? You, you have no evidence other than your subjectivity. Why when memorizing, when memorizing let me tell you, let me tell you is better? Let me tell you and this is better. Question. I said they can both be. You said it's more trustworthy. Yeah. No, it's more trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Multiple yeah. attestations. No, no, no. Listen, let me tell you sorry, something. You, well, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Sorry. I wanted, your I wanted to say to you something. Yeah, it's not just only what was you say. It's not just only one person who's memorizing from the Prophet yes. Muhammad yes. sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Multiple attestations. We are talking about many people, independent people. They memorize from him and then they transfer it to the next generation. We're not talking about one individual or two or three now the thing is here in in islam there is something called our prayer the five daily prayer do you know what part of our prayer that we recite the quran which means it is being checked 
every single day, even in the the salawat, which is which we pray loudly. We have maghrib, which is the, the after the, in the, the sun the sunset. We have the isha, the night one, and the fajr, which we which we recited even loudly. And the people behind the imam, generally the people who's the very people behind the imam, they are the one who's able to to correct and rectify the imam, which means it is checked on a daily basis. And in Ramadan, it's the whole Quran, it is checked yes. on a on a daily basis. So the people who are memorizing, yeah, the Quran, they have memorized it and they have checked it with each other, and then the next generation they have checked it with each other, and that's how it flows. It didn't go to one person to, for example, to twist or to change. So it's not subjective to some person. That's why we say the consensus of the companion of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which means they have they get together and then they brought what they have memorized and then they were checking each other so that's why even the Quran you, can, you cannot imagine even the vowels even the, to the smallest thing in the Quran so that's why the Quran is not just only history book you understand? So don't yeah, compare. It's not history at it's not, all. No, it's not a history book. It's not history at all. I'm not I agree saying, with that. It, no, it has I history. It, history. history. Oh, it has history, but it's not a history book. It has science, yeah. but it's not a science no, book. It has many things. Okay, okay. That's, so, that's a good point. So my point is that the Quran was checked even in memorization along with the written one. And they were checking each other. That's how is it? Which means the people who are writing the Quran, they will check it with the memorized and the memorization. And the one who memorized, yeah. they will check it with the written one. It goes, you know, vice versa. That's how is it? So it's not just only you could say, oh, oh, Uthman has been the Quran. That means he's lost. Who said who told you this? That Uthman he has been the other masahif because of a few reasons. One of the reasons, some of them. He will, he will, for example, he will write part of the Quran. He will not have all of it. And then the people, they will think, maybe people after they say, okay, this is the complete Quran. The other one is wrong. So Uthman, he made sure he brought all this counsel of the, of the company, brought them. And he said to them, and he was part of them. And he brought the other companions who are known by memorizing the Quran from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And not just that, and, had, and then they checked how it was written and how it was memorized. And then they brought all of this. Then they got all what they have, they have gathered from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the other ones, which is here, you know, writing here, writing, for example, part of it, or some of them they used to write on a skin, some of them they used to write on a, on a bones yeah. or something like that, or on a wooden piece or something like that. So he made sure that to bend the other ones and keep this one, which he kept it for himself, authorized and the authorized one by the a committee. Is that one person? You understand? He's a committee. Those committee, every single person of them, he has approved, approved by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he is a trustworthy to convey the message of Quran. It's, it's something is something greater than you even you, you could even if you are there. It's something so great to the extent that's why we believe the Quran is intact. Anyway, we have to, we have to we will wrap up this you know this conversation. Let's we have, wrap up. You know we you know as we need we need to go the other. You, see, the, there. you see this manuscript here, Pablo? Yeah. Did you understand that? Hmm? See this manuscript here? Yeah. This was carbon dated by the Oxford University from the time of Prophet Muhammad oh, So we have written. This is unlike. Even the Bible, you know, from the Bible, from the Jesus to the hundred years, mm. you'll not find a single manuscript. I like we, how you say even have, the Bible, as if the Bible is any trustworthy. No, I'm telling you the other as, country. As if the, there's any trust to the Bible. Well, it's whether trust or not, the important thing is about the preservation. Both the, both the books, the Bible and the Quran, claims to be preserved. the people who, have, who, who, who actually believe in them, yeah, they claim yeah, that yeah. it's from God. Yes. So I'm telling you that the Quran, unlike the Old Testament and the New Testament, <laughs> have something from the person to whom it was revealed within a few decades For, forget about a few hundred years within a few decades of his time now listen listen to this a book like the old testament between moses and the earliest extant manuscript you have like thousand to eleven hundred years gap and between jesus and the earliest extant manuscript of the of the new testament you're talking about more than 150 to 200 years and even that the early ones are just fragments. Here we are talking about the entire Quran in the Top Kapi Museum uh, uh, manuscript. And in Sana'a Yemen. You are talking about Yeah, and the Sana'a manuscript. Uh, in Sana'a Yemen. And okay, you gave me lots of information. Yeah, yeah. Here. So go on, check. How does this in any way contradict what I told you? It contradicts in, in, in one way. Because you are saying that 
the, the best way of preservation is written. But I'm telling you the written thing. For example, most of the written history is like you heard of the saying, history is by the victors. Of course. So what they do is they would write something contrary to what happened actually. So it is either hearsay or fabricated or sometimes even the truth. I'm not saying it's not it's always false. Mm -hmm. How are you to ascertain what really happened here? This way of preservation of the written history is never accurate to the point of an independent attestation of the Quran. When I say independent, you all talk about different chains of narration Look, from many Ashim, different I think, places. I think you misunderstand okay, okay, something. Okay, because I will not try to claim as if I have the absolute version of history, as if history is 100% certain. I never claim that. I will not use the same fallacies no, that you I'm do. About the now way the problem is, you say that the things written in the Quran and your history that yeah. you are claiming that really no, no, only the Quran. They are the absolute. I said the certainty. Quran and the Hadith, at least the Sahih Hadith. That is the problem. We, we have. I do not claim that what I say is absolutely certain. Yeah, but you, you don't do claim, claim you exist absolutely. You do claim that what you're saying. <laughs> Paolo, is you don't claim certain. anything absolute. I've told you many times. You don't claim anything yeah, absolute. No, 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 Hashim, 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 Hashim. For you, comes, nothing is absolute. There comes the other No, 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 it's not an dominant. It's a fact. Yes, it is another. It's a fact for you. Yes, it is another dominant. How is it another dominant if you believe it? The argument. You're ridiculing the argument. Okay, let me tell you. No, 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 no. I'll let you. No, let me speak. Okay, go on. Go, go on. Fair enough. Fair enough. Go on. Okay. Speak. We need so, to wrap up. By the way, we need to wrap up. Yeah, yeah. We need to go. So very quickly, let me make okay, a point, and then I'll make one final well, point, and then let me you, make you my shut final up. point go about on. if I do exist or not. Yes. When I told you I'm not certain of my existence well, again, exist. yes. again, because you, you seem <laughs> it seemed to be hard to understand for you to understand. Yeah, this. I understand why. I understand why yes. because you're a religious person. For you, your knowledge is absolute. Now. The perception of my existence is not absolute. Which is what I my said. My sight is not absolute. Which is my what I feelings said. are not absolute. How is that? I don't Stop interrupting me, Hashim. I, how is that interrupt you. I, I agree interrupt with you. Be silly. Okay, go on. Now, my perception of myself is not the same as your perception of me. And my perception of you is not the same as your perception of yourself. And every single person here has a different perception of different people. Now, what does this mean? It all de my existence depends on my perception. What I told you is that all I have is perception of myself based on my feelings based on my knowledge based on my past that is why I am not certain of my existence as I see it now do you understand it Hashim no I cannot shout. explain no it in any different way okay by the way from what I said to you how is that different I said it's completely different I said based on your understanding you're not even sure if you exist that is what I said. You now, how is it? How is it different to what you just explained? You did not understand what I told. Okay. By the way, anyway, <laughs> let's agree. Let's agree. If, you, if you did understand, Listen, Hashim, you are Hashim, feigning Hashim. as if you didn't understand. Hashim, Hashim you, you need agree. to stop Sorry? playing dumb. Sometimes. Let's agree. This is a what you say is I know you're triggered because you have I'm been found triggered. out. You are. Right. That's why. That's why you're. Okay. Good now, one, Hashim. Good now, one. Now, now, I let you speak. Now, let me speak. Look, whether you exist or not, that's an important point we were discussing here. We were discussing. Oh, now it's not important. Now that I've disproved what you said. It's and stop interrupting. Use your own preaching. Okay, now what I'm saying is this. If, if history cannot be certain because it's written either by victors, it can be manipulated, it can be fabricated, and it can even be, be correct in certain cases. But I've, I want you, now this is for you because I've given the reason why I believe the Quran and the Hadith, yes, the Sahih Hadith, are accurate and cannot be altered based on the stringent science of collection of the Hadith and the stringent science of collection and preservation of the Quran. I want you to give me any example from history where there's independent attestation and it can be fabricated. Go on. Sorry. You have such a ridiculous Go. lack of self-awareness. Yeah, well, you claim that history is not certain because it's written by people and it's distorted by the victors. Is that what I said? But, yes, it's is exactly that what, I said? what you said. It's exactly what I you said. said. That I'm history is written by the victor and thus it is history. disturbed. Was that the only thing I said? Distorted. That's one of the things that you said. And I also said so it can be accurate, mistake. remember? Hashim, you're so don't, no, no, you're misquoting you're me now. Up now. You're misquoting. Okay, anyway. Hashim, you're the one who's getting triggered on Answer my question next time if you have an answer. Otherwise, we leave it there. Because I said history can be fabricated, it, it can, can be changed, it's it written by victors, and it it's also can. accurate. But he only picked up on one of those points, and that is very, very insincere of it's you. It's not absolutely accurate. There is a possibility that parts of history are not exactly what, what happened. Thing, what That's what I that said. Is, that is how. That is why we need <laughs> That's to exactly see what I said. different, what different sources. Paolo. That is why I told you Paolo. the book that I quoted to you yeah. recites the Muslim scholars and the Christian scholars, and it tries to kind of put That's them together. What was actually 
relatively possible to happen. Who, who is that, that person? Do you know him? Okay, the book that I not the book, the author. Do you know the author? I don't. I don't. I didn't write down the author. No, no, no you don't have to. It's called In God's Path. Yeah, yeah, but if you don't know the author, if you don't know the author, I don't. If you don't know the author, then I can only say that look. What am I? Am I obligated to know the author? I know the. I know the title. You know, I'm not saying what you're obligated and what you're not obligated. What I'm saying is that when you when you read when you read a book, at least you should know if the author is reliable. Okay. If the author is not reliable, it's not someone who's who's a professional in understanding the what do you say, the preservation of the Quran or preservation of the Bible. If he's talking about that, then he's not someone who's professional. Okay. Okay. But if he is, but like I said, David Yellow. Okay. Yeah. What is he? What's his qualification? I, I have no idea. This okay, because you know, you know, there are people like Jay Smith. He's saying he's a, he's a, uh, what do you say? He's an expert in Islam. So people claim many things, but unless we see that credentials, there's no way to know this. This is the Scotsman fallacy. Every every time somebody puts you in front of a fact that you don't like, you will say that's not real Islam. But that's not real Islamic history. That's whitewashing. That is. I give the example about Jay Smith. That is the Scotsman fallacy. No, every time you don't like a fact, you will say that's. Not a real in, in the case of Jay Smith, it's not a Scotch mentality because he doesn't have a qualification. I'm not talking about Jay Smith. But I was. Okay, when, you made, when you made the statement of the Scotch mentality, sorry? What I'm saying is that if I, have, if I have knowledge about the author and if I know his qualification, then we can actually say, yes, what he has written is something worth looking at. Okay, but so if qualification if guy, it was, is what matters. Can I finish? Can I finish? Okay. If, Jay, if someone like Jay Smith comes and tells me I'm an expert on Islam and the guy has got zero degree, Greece in Islam, then how can I trust him? It's got nothing to do with the Scotsman fallacy, which you incorrectly brought in. I, but what I, I said, agree more. what I what I said was this: with regards to history, I gave you that's four, that's at least four different ways how it can be manipulated, and one of those four was other than, and the, one of those four, one of those four was that it can also be accurate. But you only, unfortunately, picked up on one of those criteria. I hope you won't deny what you just said. Okay. Which because part? The, the, the part that if you don't have a, a degree in something, you cannot really talk about it. If you don't study something, you cannot really talk about it too much. Now, based on that, why would you believe Muhammad who was illiterate? Okay, first and foremost, what does illiterate why would you, mean? Illiterate means somebody who doesn't okay. know how to write. Someone who, to read. someone who cannot write, can he memorize and speak things? <sighs> you are missing my point. You, you, can you answer? No, 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 calm down. Just calm answer down. him. Yeah. Listen, you told me that the more studies, the more knowledge somebody amasses, the more trustworthy they are. I could not agree more. Yeah. Now, if that is, uh, that is the main point why you qualify knowledge, why do you trust Muhammad, okay. who had no knowledge whatsoever? Coming from an agnostic, that's a good question. Okay, there you go. It's a good question. <laughs> yes? Do you believe in messengers getting revelation from God? Possibly at least. No, I no don't. because you don't because you're not sure if God is. You are agnostic. Yes. Okay. Good. Now that is a difference between someone who claims to have prophecy, someone who claims to be a messenger and getting revelation. You know the difference between someone who is a who is a layman or someone who is even educated, yes, and someone who claims to be a messenger. We don't equate them all together. The same. So a messenger, we test them for the prophecies. We test them based on the miracles that God has provided them. We don't just accept just because he claims to be a prophet of God. We accept him as a prophet of God. God has given us a bit, uh, the ability and the criteria how to identify true and false prophets. And this goes in, in all the Faiths. Okay. We have this criteria. So, does that answer your question? Okay, so it's the got people nothing to are the ones who choose yeah. who speaks for God and who's just illiterate. Yeah. So, who God, it doesn't matter if. And the people are trustworthy. No, in no, that it's choice. not about illiterate. In the choice whether we can trust an illiterate Actually, person from the desert listen. or we cannot trust the illiterate listen, person listen. from listen. the desert. Listen, listen. I think you, you did not either listen to me or you did I not did understand what I said. I did listen so to if you, but prophet, the problem is that I do not trust when a person tells me he's the messenger. Paolo, listen to this. It's not enough for me. If someone does a miracle in front of you, yes? which you cannot even accept or understand scientifically. For example, in the case of Moses, he split the Red Sea. Maybe you don't believe that to be historical fact, but the thing is that if you had seen it with your own eyes, would you believe it? Why don't you believe in the Iliad? What Iliad? In the Iliad. You, you don't know. You, you yeah, gave me... I know, but what about the Iliad? The Odyssey is another thing. The Odyssey is different to the Iliad. What about the Iliad? The Iliad, the Trojan War, the Iliad, right? 
What about that? Let's talk about it. It's about Greek mythology. How the Greek gods came from the skies and helped the Greeks win the war against the Trojans. Some gods were supporting the Trojans. Some gods were defending the Greeks. I did read it in very big detail. Yeah. 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 Ah, do, you, do I believe it? No, of course not. Yeah. Okay. It's, so you're it's asking. A story for children. So, so you're asking me why I don't believe? Yeah. Why do you Should believe you why? in the Quran and you don't believe in the okay. Iliad? First and foremost, we were talking about the Prophet Muhammad being unlettered and why I don't believe. I don't know how you jumped to the Iliad. It's got no connection. Because, because it's one mythology. Just no, like the no, Quran. no, no. The Quran is not the mythology. A mythology is something like the Greek mythology, where you have multiple gods telling you different things and they fight each other to win. In the case of Islam, if you believe in a poly, uh, uh, what do you say, in a, uh, yeah, polythe a polytheism, that itself is contrary to the belief in one God. And do you know why Allah gives us a reason in the Quran itself? That if you have two mighty things, both of them claiming to be God, then who is the most powerful? Who is going to have the upper hand or the say as, as the last say? Say for example, one God said, I want sunset now. And the other God who is equally powerful says, no, I want sunrise now. What will happen? Clearly they'll have a clash. And that is exactly what happened in the Hindu mythology where the gods fought each other and the Greek mythology where the gods fought each other. And that is the reason I don't believe in the Iliad. Does that answer your question? So you don't believe in the Iliad while believing in the Quran? Yes. Just because the Quran has one God instead yes. of having many. Yes. So that's the only, only No, no, that's and, not the only reason. Proof. Okay. That's not the, I can why are you not a Jew? I, I can give you, I can give you many other reasons. I can give you many other reasons. By the way, a Jew, have a lot by the way, a, a, Jew, a Jew by definition is someone who believes in one God already. Yes. A Jew by definition doesn't believe in Jesus as a, as a Messiah. And Prophet I can't hear you over the balaclava. Could you take it off, please? Okay. Don't worry about Jesus. Yeah. I, think yeah. I don't worry, I just can't hear you. Okay, so Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and even Jesus and even Moses, all of them, they had the test of prophethood in terms of the message, in terms of the... And they were all given this special, uh, what do you say, favor by God of doing miracles mm -hmm. to prove to people like you, mm -hmm. yes, and specifically like you, I'm okay. saying the reason, those who are hyper-skeptical, yes, and it is, it is something which we find in many other people, that they will be skeptical. In fact, I will be skeptical if somebody comes and tells me that I'm a prophet or, or someone being elected by God. Because a prophet is someone who's chosen by God to do things for him. He himself will not believe it first. You know, the Prophet ﷺ, when he got the first revelation, he was reluctant. That no, I don't want, I don't want this, I don't want a part of this. Because this is something that is very, very difficult. Even Prophet Mo uh, Moses, you know, all the prophets, they had a lot of tests before they were chosen to be someone uh, who represents God. And these people, they themselves were, just like you are being skeptical, they themselves were skeptical about their own self. Mm -hmm. That maybe, no, I'm listening to things, I'm hearing things. Some of them said, no, maybe I'm listening to some I'm, spirits. I'm it. <laughs> they themselves were I mean, questioning this. if God this. speaks to you, I think you should question your sanity before you, you trust what God tells you to do. Well, I think you should, you should question your sanity if you think we came from nowhere. <laughs> okay, so if you think that it came from God, you shouldn't question. You should just no, no. do I'm what saying God once tells you, you to do. You have established oneness of God and belief in God, then things fall in place very nicely about the universe and everything. But you, trust me, if you if you are not going to believe in God until you go to your grave, you will be hyper skeptical and you will not have peace in your mind. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. They will be up to your eyes. I'm not looking for peace. I'm not looking for peace. I'm looking for better knowledge. And that is why you will never understand because you don't understand the the main thing about what I'm saying, which is uncertain truths will always triumph over certain. Certain lies. Oh, you tell me uncertain, uncertain truths. truths. How can it be always triumph? Over How do you know the uncertainty is the truth? <laughs> the fact that you that do itself not is a paradox. What I'm telling you, if something is uncertain, I will never be able to prove anything okay. to you. You know that is. You deny if, yourself the knowledge of uncertainty. If I was going the to possibility of improving your point no, of view. No, I have no problem you improving my knowledge. In fact, in Islam, we are not restricted upon improving our knowledge and that is a reason the early Muslims when they actually went in the path of finding different exploring science and geography and many other things about astronomy that is not something in fact the deen the Quran and the teaching of Islam was what propelled them in the sciences on the contrary to what you just said so a person who is uncertain they cannot come to a certainty that this is the truth okay so like Paulo here is not certain whether he exists I know I keep bringing the fact this that I'm Certain makes me have much more knowledge than your false certainty. Well, how your you feeling of false certainty is your is, is you it's thinking you understand it's all the world do while well, you, know you don't. How do you know it's false? Because your feelings are flawed. No, no. How do you know it's false? I'm flawed. asking you the certainty I have. How do you know it's false? Are you a man? Yes. Are you a man? Yes. Are you certain? No. <laughs> You, can, you, can you, see, you, see, you see, this is actually right. This is uh, this is their right. dominant. This is where the dominant. Are you a woman? This is 
where the Adam where in them comes from. Are you a woman? Hashim, Hashim, Are you a woman? Are you a woman? Stop with the Adam. Are you a woman? Stop with the Are you a woman? Are you a woman? I'm not a woman. How are you sure you're not? Because my DNA says so. Your DNA says so. How do you know your DNA? Because I've checked. I've checked. You've checked. Have you seen your DNA? Have you felt your DNA? How do you know? How do you know the thing written is your DNA? By the way, do you know? He got married and have children. In a male and female. In a male. Wait, wait. In a male and female, you can tell by the DNA whether it's X, Y chromosomes. 